So, this is the illustrious Incredible World, huh? Impressive. And better yet, there's no one around to see me. Now, let's jump the fence. It's one small step for man and one giant leap for no! Oh, that was not cool, Millard. Oh. 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 What is that? It must be my cell phone. My cell phone's gone. It must be in my backpack. My backpack's gone, too. I know. It came off when I jumped the fence. Oh, it's Mr. Romano. Hello? I thought you were never going to answer the phone. What took you so long? Huh? Technical difficulties, sir. But uh, remember, we're supposed to use our code names. I'm Yellow Jacket, and you're Bumblebee. Forget the silly code names. You watch too much TV. So, did you get in? Yes. I jumped the fence. So what's it like? What's the fence like? No. <laughs> what's the park like? Is it as incredible as they say? Well, I have to admit, sir, it does look very nice. The landscaping is well manicured, and the buildings are bright and colorful, and everything seems so... All right, that's enough. I get the picture. Okay, you know what to do, right? Yes, sir. You can count on me. There's no way they're going to win that World's Best Theme Park Award this year. Well, they better not, or you're going to be scraping gum off the pavement for the rest of your life. That title belongs to us, Big Thrill Theme Park, and I don't intend to share it with anyone. Do I make myself clear? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, you make yourself clear. Very clear. Good. Don't fail me. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Can I help you find something? Uh, no. I was just looking for my, uh, uh, Cell phone! And uh, here it is! Well, I'm delighted you found it. You know, I don't believe we've met. My name is Mr. Peterson. I'm the park director. Park director? That's right. And what's your name? It's uh, Grover. Uh, Millard Grover. Well, Millard Grover, do you mind if I ask why you're late? Late? You missed the staff meeting. Staff meeting? They didn't tell you about the daily staff meeting? Oh, of course. The daily staff meeting. So it's a daily, is it? Yes, and that means every day. Right. I'll need to make a note of that. Good. Now, I suggest you get into your uniform right away. The park opens in one hour. Uh, yes, Mr. Uh, Peterson. Peterson. Uh, yes, Mr. Peterson. <laughs> uh, Millard. The employee lockers are that way. There's a sign on the door that says employees only. Oh, of course. I just got turned around. Uh, thank you, Mr. Peterson. Uh, it was nice to meet you, Mr. Peterson. He better not be working the sky ride today. That's all I can say. Good morning, Mr. Peterson. Good morning, Miss Ryan. How are you today? I'm fine, sir. Guess what? We just received a call from Adventure TV. Really? What did they want? Well, they want to come visit the park and needed to speak with you. Well, I told them you'd return their call as soon as possible. Um, Adventure TV coming to Incredi World? That's kind of a big deal, isn't it? 
Okay, I'll call them as soon as I get back. I just need to speak with the guys here first. What's wrong? I, I just don't trust them. I mean, they always seem to have something up their sleeves. Who? Uh, Gabe and Cody? Yeah, Gabe and Cody. I had no idea you felt that way. Do you want me to say something to them? No, that's all right. I'm a big girl. I can handle it. Well, as you can see, there's nothing to worry about because they're not even around. <laughs> see, that's what I'm talking about. All right, time to stop playing with the sound effects. When are they ever going to grow up? <laughs> That's okay, Miss Ryan. We'll let the extreme team do that. Good idea. Sorry, we just got this incredible new animal sound library, and we had to try it out on someone. Of course you did. That elephant is awesome. What's wrong, Miss Ryan? Why are you hiding? I'm just keeping a safe distance. I never know what might be flying or crawling or slithering around either of you. What's that you're eating? Mealworms. Ew. See what I mean? They're not bad. Really? You want to try oh, some? Disgusting. You're kidding, right? No, look. You want some? They're very nutritious. <laughs> I'd rather take a vitamin. I'll take some. Sure, help yourself. Oh man, you took all the big juicy ones. Sorry. That's okay. Mmm, mmm, delicious. See, you sure mm. you don't want any? I think I'm gonna be sick. I guess we should talk about something else. Mm. Hey, are we still on for staff devotions tomorrow? Yes, as a matter of fact, that's why I came over here in the first place. I wanted to make sure you remembered. So have you decided what you're gonna do yet? Well, we thought we'd do a couple creature features, since that is our specialty. Great, I was hoping you'd say that, since most of the staff doesn't get to see your show. I know, it's just that the hard part is deciding which ones to do. It doesn't matter. They're all fascinating, if you ask me. Every time I watch one of your shows and learn about some animal, I am just amazed at the handiwork of God. I know. Isn't it incredible? You mean, isn't he incredible? How anyone can think that it all just happened by chance is totally beyond me. It doesn't make any sense at all, and it's not even good science. And yet they teach evolution and millions of years like it's a fact, when really it's just a belief. I think it's terrible. Yeah, a terrible lie. Mm -hmm. And that's why we need places like Incrediworld, so people can have another opportunity to hear the truth. Yeah. But always remember, even with all the evidence of design we see in these creatures, the very best evidence for creation is the Bible. That's right. And the Bible tells us that God created everything in six short days. Not that millions and billions of years thing. Amen, brother. Well, I better get going. I've got to make an important phone call. Oh, Adventure TV called this morning. They want to come to Incredible World. <gasps> really? Adventure TV? That's kind of a big deal. Uh, so what do they want to do? I don't know. I've got to call them back to find out. Do you think maybe they'd film our show? Well, I suppose that's possible. You mean we might be on TV? I better watch this shirt. Ooh, good idea, Cody. Hey, hey, do they still do that uh, award thingy? You mean the world's best theme park award? Yes, they do. Hey, didn't we uh, win that last year? Come on, Gabe. We've won that the last three years in a row. You know, it's a real honor winning that award, considering all the other great theme parks. But best of all, it gives us an opportunity for our message. I'll let you know what's going on as soon as I find out, okay? And in the meantime, let's be sure we're at the top of our game. First impressions are very important. That's right. Come on, Gabe. We've got work to do. Oh, I'm right behind you. Wow. This is exciting. So... Adventure TV is coming to Incrediworld, huh? That's perfect. We'll just have to welcome them, won't we? Thank you.
welcome to Incredible World. I'm Miss Barb. And I'm Mr. Matt. Now, Miss Barb, yeah. do you like amusement parks? I love amusement parks. I try to go, you know, every year or two. Absolutely. I try to go all the time because you know what I love? What? The roller coasters. And I say the taller, the faster, and the more times they go upside down, the better. Uh, I get a little sick with the little upside down thing. Ooh, you know? really? But you know what I love? What do you love? I love the animal shows because wow. I am so fascinated by the amazing world that God has created that I just love going to those shows. Yeah, and that's what makes Incredible World the greatest amusement park that you could ever That's right. Visit. In fact, it's an amazing park. That's right. Yes. So we're going to be taking a thrill ride through God's creation because God is an awesome creator. Absolutely. Now, we need to get ready to have a great day inside the park. So what do we need to get ready? All right. So the first thing we need is our ticket. Ooh. If you have a ticket, if you don't, just pretend you do. I've okay. got a right, ticket. Got I'm ready ticket. to go. All right. Do you have comfy shoes on? Oh, yep. Always. All right. You got to have comfy shoes. Mm -hmm. How about you might need sunglasses? Do you have some? I came totally prepared. Oh, Mr. Matt, you are ready. All right. All right. I think we are ready to head to the park, right? And the first thing we're going to check out is our special effects theater. Have you ever been to one of those, oh, Mr. Matt? Those are so much fun with the yeah. shaking and yeah. the moving and yep. all those cool things that yep. go on. Yep. So we're going to check that out now and find out a little bit more about how life began. Here we are at our special effects theater. And when we do our special effects, mm -hmm. kids, you're going to follow Mr. Matt. Okay. Yep. So you might be reading what he's reading or doing what he's doing or whatever. Okay. So just follow along. I'm the special effects and you're my helpers. All right. So here we go. Now we're going back to the beginning. Oh, let's be a clock. Bing bong, bing bong. <laughs> Very good. All right, now, did you know there was a time before time? Bong, bong, bong. You did that three times, didn't you? I did. You know what? That reminds me about what was going on before time. Because God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit always existed because they live outside of time okay very cool. but nothing else existed before they created time mm. right so we're gonna find out what was happening at the beginning when they first made something besides themselves all right so we're gonna read Genesis 1 1 ready ready in the beginning God, God created, created the, the heavens, heavens and, and the earth, earth. Okay, so we know that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So that's really important because right off the bat, the first words of the Bible say, God is the one that made it. That's now, right. some people might say that this all came about by this cosmic explosion called a Big Bang. Now you do it with me. Yeah, but is that what God's word says? No. It says God created it, right? So we know that there really wasn't a Big Bang that happened billions of years ago. And from that Big Bang, which is all kind of disorder, all this beautiful world came. We know that's not really how it worked, right? All right. So instead, if you look at the Bible and you follow carefully, especially like maybe check out the genealogies mm -hmm. in Genesis 5, Genesis 11, you see that it was really not that long ago, maybe 6,000 years ago or so, that God made the world. That's when time began. And he made the first days in six days. Yeah. He made this all in six days. Six days. Now count to six with me. Here we go. And we're going to do it in our biggest, strongest voice. One, two, three, four, five, six. That sounded awesome. All right, did you think this was hard for God to do this in six days. No way. Right. He can do anything. That's why we call this incredible world. It's an incredible world because he's an incredible creator. He can do anything. He could have made it in one second. That's right? right. Okay. Because that's how great God is. All right. So it wasn't hard. Now let's find out what happened in Genesis 2. All right. Let's read this one together. Okay. The, the earth, earth was, was without, without form and, and void, and darkness was over the, the face of the deep. deep. All right, so it says that the earth was without form. 
All right, Mr. Matt? Yeah, so if you have a couple containers with water, you can pour the water back and forth with me, and if you don't, that's okay. We can just make sloshing sounds. All right. Because water, you know, it's without form. Yeah, it's without form. I mean, it kind of has, it's, it's inside that cup right now, but if we dump that on the floor, which we're not gonna do, but if we did, would it still have the shape of the cup? No. no. It'd be all over the place. It'd just be a great big messy puddle, right? That's right. Because it's without form. Well, that's what the earth was like at the beginning. It was without form, okay? And it says it was void, which means it was empty. It didn't have any people on it yet. It didn't have any plants on it yet. It didn't have any animals on it yet. It was without form and void. And so God was able to make everything out of nothing that that is so amazing to think about now think about it if i wanted to bake a cake because oh. i love cake oh they can pretend with you mr yeah Kinkier. i would need all kinds of ingredients i would need like flour and, and sugar and, and oil and all kinds of stuff i would need a whole bunch of ingredients but god was able to create something out of nothing that's incredible now let's turn the lights out so everything is formless and void and there's darkness and genesis 3 says and god said let there be light, light. turn those lights back on yeah let there be light and there was light that's what it says in genesis 1 3. Absolutely. so the first thing god made was light right yes. isn't that cool and let's see what it says in verse 5. let's read it together okay and, and god, god called, called the light day, day and the darkness he called night and, and there, there was evening and there was morning the, the first day. day so god made it all he made it with nothing he started it's called ex nihilo when you start with nothing okay he made it in six days right mm -hmm. and we just learned what he made the first day he made what light all right so let's review so let's review i'm going to put up this picture but i'm only going to give you three seconds to study the picture and then i'm going to take it away and you need to remember what was on it so here we go one two three all right it's gone but do you remember what was on it well, you might have said light, and that would be right. And we know that on the first day, God made light, and he called the light day, and the darkness, which was also on that, he called night. night. All right, so that's day one. Let's move on to day two. So we talked about day one and what God made. Now let's check out day two. So we're going to read a couple verses. The first verse we're going to read, boys are going to read with Mr. Yep. Matt. The next one, girls, you read with me. And then let's all read the last one together. All right, so let's start with Genesis 1, 6. Boys, read it with me. And God said, let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the expanse and separated the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. And it was so. And, and God, God called the expanse heaven, heaven and, and there, there was evening, and, and there was morning, the second day. So God created a sky in the middle of those waters. Remember how we talked about how it was formless and void on that day one? Okay. Yep. Now he's made a sky in there. All right, so let's reach up as high as we can, way up into the sky, and even jump to the sky. Woo! And you know what? I'm so glad God made the sky because there's a lot of great things in the sky. But mm -hmm. one thing is, it's got air there, so that helps us be able to breathe. Oh, okay. Now take in a big breath and see how long you can hold it. <gasps> and while you're holding it, let me just say, God called the sky heaven. Okay, so the waters with the sky in between, which is heaven, okay? Were you able to hold it all that time? Yeah. All right. So let's review. I'm going to put up the picture again for three seconds, and you're going to have to remember what God did on day two. Here we go. One, two, three. Did you say that God made the sky? 
He separated those waters and he made the sky. That's what happened on day two. Now on to day three. Let's find out what God made. It says, and God said, let the waters under the heavens. Remember how we just talked about in day two that he made the sky called the heavens and there's water underneath and water above. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let the water under the heavens, the sky, be gathered together in one place. Mm, let's gather those waters together. Here we go. I like that. And let the dry land appear. Here we go. Yep, and it was so. And then God called the dry land. Ooh, can you guess what he called the dry land? Did you say earth? That would be right. He called the dry land earth. And the waters that were gathered together, he called <gasps> seas. But he's not done. No. He's still creating. Mm -hmm. All right, on day three, here's the next part. And God said, let the earth sprout plants yielding seed and fruit trees bearing fruit. Oh, let's be a fruit tree growing up out of the ground, sprouting and Woo! growing fruit. And he fruit. says, let's make each of those according to its kind. Oh. And it was so, according to its kind. Yeah, so that means, so if you have a fruit tree like an apple tree, well, they grow apple. And inside the apple, guess what you have? Apple seeds. So if I planted these apple seeds, well, what would grow? Well, an apple tree, right? Yeah. And, and what kind of fruit would that tree have? Apples. And then you get the seeds from there and you can plant those. And guess what? It's going to happen again. I would never be able to get like oranges. No. Or peaches. No. Or puppies. No. no. Or, or anything not. else from an apple seed because it's after its own kind. Right. So you're going to see that a lot in Genesis 1 where it talks about making things according to its kind. So on this day, God was making all the plants. And it says, God saw it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning the third day. All right, so I'm going to put up the day three poster and give you three seconds to see if you can remember what God created on day three. Here we go. One, two, three. Now, do you remember what God made on day three? There were a lot of different things. He made, we talked about the dry land. Mm -hmm. He gathered the seas, and then he made all the plants. So you could have said grass, herbs, fruit trees, oak trees, anything that's a plant anything. really is what he made on day three. So what a cool day oh, that was. That's right. Okay, on to day four. Oh. It says right here, and God said, let there be lights in the expanse, in the mm. sky of the heavens, to okay. separate the day from the night. Oh. Now, can you think of anything that's in the sky? Ooh, well. Besides planes, you know. Yeah, well, for light, there's obviously the sun. Right. Right, and at nighttime, there's the moon. Right, all right, so there's some other things too. So you follow along, you're gonna help me with this. All right, and God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day. Oh, that's the sun, so let's make a big sun. Yep, and a lesser night, lesser light to rule the night. Oh, we can make a moon too. Woo! Okay, and here's something else though. And what other thing are we really forgetting that's in the sky? Okay, so lights in the sky. I don't know, what is it? And the stars. Oh, the stars. The stars, now yeah. that even has the idea of the planets in it. Uh-huh, because when I look up in my telescope, mm -hmm. the planets, they look like stars. Yeah, exactly. So. The sun, the moon, the stars, the planets. God made all that on day four. All right. Now, let's review. Can you remember which day God created the earth? Shout it out. Day? Did you say one? <laughs> all right. How about this one? Which day did God create the plants? Day? Did you say three? One more try. Okay. Which day? Did God create the sun, moon, and stars? It was on day... Did you say four? All right, if you did, you're right. Now, remember how we talked about some people believing, if they really weren't t trusting God's word, that all this came about by a big bang. 
which we could call that evolution. Mm -hmm. All right, and from a big bang, things evolve or they change is what they say, okay? And so you, in that case, you would have the sun mm. before you would have plants, animals, people, anything like that, okay? Right. So they say the sun has to come first after this big bang, Eventually the sun showed up mm -hmm. and then things kept evolving uh -huh. and then living things started coming, okay? Okay. So people who do believe in the Big Bang think this would be a big problem for plants to come before the sun because they say, well, that wouldn't work because plants have to have sunlight to live, right? Hmm. Okay, but I want you to think about this for a minute. First of all, what did we say was made on day one? Oh, light. There was some form of light. We don't exactly know what it was, but we know there was some form of light, okay? Mm -hmm. So, and then the plants were made on day three. Now, what day was the sun made? Ooh, day four. Day four. We're talking about a day, a day. okay? 24 hours or less between when the plants were made and the sun was made. Don't you think most plants could make it for a day or less? Yeah, absolutely. I don't yeah. think that'd be a problem at all. Yeah, especially if you live around where we do, where the yeah. sun's hardly ever out. It doesn't even shine that <laughs> much in the wintertime, especially. Right. So anyway, we know God's word is right, and it tells us the order things happened in. So we know the plants were day three, and then following right up after that, God made the sun, the moon, the stars, and the planets. All right. So let's put up our day four image for our three seconds and let's see if you can remember everything that god created on day four here we go one two three all right do you remember everything god created on day four did you say the sun the moon the stars and the planets because if you did you're right, That's right. all right let's move on to day five there's so much cool stuff god made let's find out in verse 20 it says, and God said, let the water swarm. That means be full of, swarm with swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the heavens. Wow. Oh, so God is starting to fill those waters with fish. Can you guys do a fish impression with me? Here we go. Oh, that, that's pretty good. I like that impression. But you know what? That's not all, because it says in the next verse, God created the great sea creatures. It's more than just fish. Oh, so like octopuses and yeah. squids. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So what, what's your favorite sea creature? Why don't you shout it out on three? Ready? One, two, three. Did anybody say the dolphin? I think that's a pretty cool thing. They are so cool. So it's not just fish, it's things like dolphins, whales. So let me tell you a little bit about the bottlenose dolphin. He's part of the dolphin kind, okay? God made them so interesting and so cool. One of the things he gave them is something called blubber. Oh, you ever heard of that? Mr. Yeah, Adam? I have heard of blubber. All right, so it's this thing that they have that helps keep them stay warm because the waters could be cold. All so right. It's like an extra level of fat that they get. Oh, so yeah. it keeps them warm. So yep. why don't we let out a big shiver on the count of three? One, two, three. <laughs> And he also made them super sleek with this outer layer of skin so they could just glide through the water super fast, no resistance. He also gave them something called echolocation. Now they can make these clicking sounds and they go out and they bounce off of something and they come back so they know where the stuff in the sea is and they're not running into it. Okay, so we're gonna try this. Okay. So they will make as many as a thousand clicks in a second. Well, let me see how many I can make okay. in a second. Okay, right. you count and I'll click. All right, okay, boys and here girls, we go. you can do this too. Here we All go. Right. All right. Two, three. Did I get to a thousand? Three seconds and yeah. you weren't even close. Was that was like five hundred? I don't even think you got two in a second. That yeah, very I'm good. not very good. But I'm they not can a get a thousand in a second. Okay. Wow. So we're gonna pretend that we're gonna do a little echolocation. Okay. So we put up a turtle here, but you can stick something, any object in the room. Just pick something wherever you are. Okay. okay. And you're gonna start clicking. And you're gonna just pretend like those clicks are going out. You're going to the object, and then you need to come right back where you were. Okay. Okay. So let's go ahead. Right. Oh, yeah. There you go. That's so pretty cool. That's what echolocation is. So God made the dolphin special. He made the whale special. He made every fish special. Every single thing is designed 
perfectly that's in those seas. So God didn't just make the sea creatures, he also made all the flying creatures on day five. Oh, like birds, like bald eagles, and maybe even pterodactyls? Yes! Oh, so what is your favorite creature that flies in the sky? Shout it out on three. Here we go. One, two, three. I think I heard somebody say woodpecker. Well, that's good because that's such a fun one to talk about. Now, you know woodpeckers like to peck wood on uh -huh. trees, right? Absolutely. Okay, and they do it really fast. <laughs> so God gave them a few things that really helped them. Mm -hmm. One is he gave them some feathers that kind of cover over their noses mm -hmm. so that they don't get wood chips up their nose. Wouldn't oh, that be annoying? Getting sawdust up my nose is never fun. No. And another thing he gave them was this cushion inside their head. Oh, well, I just happen to have a cushiony thing right here. Maybe you at home have like a pillow or maybe you have a stuffed animal or something that's real cushiony that we can put around our head. Right, so you're going to put it on the outside of your head. Of course, God put theirs inside their head. Right. All right, so what you're going to do is you're going to go over to somewhere like a wall and you're going to do it gently because we don't want anybody to get hurt. Yeah. But you're going to gently kind of peck, peck, peck against oh. it, okay? Now that, that doesn't hurt, does that it? That doesn't hurt at all. Because I got this you, you wonderful got cushion. Right, yeah. okay? And that's the same with them. They go really fast, boom, 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 against the wood. They would have such a whopping headache if they didn't have this cushion. But God, of course, thinks of everything. He sure he does. He made them perfectly. And every animal, every sea creature, every flying creature, they all are perfectly designed. Now, you know, it would just be these people that say that it just came about just out of nothing. By right? evolution. Just by evolution. And by a big bang. A big bang, and then everything evolved. All right, how would that work? And I was thinking, Mr. Matt, mm -hmm. let's pretend we were at a brick factory. They were okay. making bricks, okay? Yeah. And there was this enormous explosion yeah. at the brick factory, right? Okay. Right. After that explosion, would you expect there to be a beautiful house standing? Oh, like all the bricks exploded and landed and formed yeah, like a, a house? Yeah, a pile of rubble and then they became, it, even That's, over time, could they yeah. have become a house? That would never be able to happen. That's impossible. No, it's impossible, and that's what that's kind of saying. But we know God perfectly designed everyone. He's the creator, and on day five, he was making these special animals. Yeah, so let's put our day five poster up and I want you to take a look at it for three seconds and then you're gonna have to remember what God created so here we go one two three now what did God create on day five did you say all the sea creatures and all the flying creatures because if you did you're right all right on to day six okay here we are on day six now this is the crowning thing that God made. It's amazing. All right, so listen up. It's really cool. Let's hear verse 24, first of all. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kind, livestock and creeping things and beasts of the earth according to their kind. Oh, did you say creeping things? I did. Does that mean like bugs yes. and, and even snakes? Yeah. Hey, let's all make a snake sound. Here we go. One, two, three. Mm, he made all that on day six. Mm -hmm. And he even would have made it said the beasts of the earth. So that would be like lions, tigers, and bears, and all those things you see in the zoo. Would that also mean like my favorite type of animals to learn about? Dinosaurs? Like land dinosaurs? Absolutely, because they're beasts of the earth. So he would have made them on day six of creation. Oh, even the T-Rex? Are you guys ready to do your best T-Rex impression with me? Here we go. Wow, that was pretty impressive. I'm yes. telling you what. So let's read verse 26, and now we're going to see the most amazing thing of all God made. Read with me. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. So now God makes the first people. This is so cool. Right after he made these animals. And let them have dominion over the fish and the birds and the creeping things and the livestock and the beasts. All that stuff we're supposed to have dominion over. Now, dominion means we are supposed to be in charge mm -hmm. of all of this. We're supposed to be in charge of the earth, the 
plants, the animals, and everything, which means God wants us to take good care of it, be wise with how we steward it, but it also means that we are in charge. We're yeah. not the animals, that's right. right? We are made in God's likeness. So that's different than an animal, okay? We can create, we can do art, we can do music, we can read, we can talk, we can think. It's very different, okay? So we have dominion over the animals and we're not like them. That's what this is saying. So let's read verse 31 together now. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. So now everything on earth and in the universe is made, and it's all very good. There aren't any problems. That would be so cool. Just think about it. A lion and a lamb could hang out together. They could lay down together, and you wouldn't have to worry about them fighting or, or other animals trying to eat each other or anything like that because it was very good. Right. Everybody was vegetarian at the beginning. It tells us that they're going to eat plants, and there wasn't any killing or anything mm. like that. So that's this beautiful world God made, and he made it all in six days. But there is one more day. Yeah. So we're going to talk about day seven right but, after our review. But before we do that, let's check out our picture, our three-second review poster. Here we go. One, two, three. Now, can you remember what God did on day six? Did you say that he made all the land animals, even the bugs, the livestock, and the beasts, including the dinosaurs, and he made the first people. If you did, you're right. All right, let's move on to the last day, day seven. So day seven, here's what happened. It says, thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day, God finished his work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work. Why don't you help me and let's let out a big sigh. Here we go. One, two, three. Ah. Oh. So he's been creating for six days, six 24-hour days, and now he's resting. Not because he's tired. No. Okay, it just means because he's done. And he's setting a pattern for us. You know, we have this seven-day week, we don't do. we? And this is all developed based on this particular Bible passage. All right, do you know all seven days of the week? Say them with me, starting with Sunday. Here we go. Sunday, Monday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Okay, well, I don't think that was fast enough. Were we supposed to say it fast? I think you can say it a lot faster. So can you really? do it faster? I can definitely do it faster. I think you can. Okay? Here we go. Okay, see if we can do it faster. Here we go. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Okay, I bet they can even do it faster, but we'll let them do it later. All right, so seven day a week. Now, people who think that there took millions of years, it wouldn't make any sense that we have this seven day week, but we have had this since the beginning of time. Like everybody's basing their life on a seven day week, wow. right? And you know why? It's because the Bible's true. And God laid out this pattern for us in the very beginning of Genesis. So we know that that's true. That's really cool. So yeah. let's put up our review poster and I'm gonna give you three seconds to remember what God did on day seven. Here we go. One, two, three. Do you remember what God did on day seven? Did you say he rested? Because that's what he did. Now, we've gone through all our days. We've gone through the seventh day when God rested. Now, if you want to, you can go ahead and do one of these cool creation games afterwards or the puppet or whatever. Okay, you can continue on. But we just want you to remember God is incredible and he is the incredible creator this didn't all just happen god made it so now that we've finished our lesson we're going to do our little segment called now what this perhaps is the most important part of the vbs day so if you could do it right after the lesson go ahead and do that if you can't just do it some other time during the day, maybe if you're eating a meal together or before bedtime or just sometime before the next VBS day. All right, here we go. I've been thinking, isn't God incredible after all that we've just talked about? So what I wanna do is give you a couple questions you can talk about just to think about how incredible God is. 
So here's your first question that you can chat through together. Imagine if you were in the Garden of Eden and the animals were parading by. What a creative God. What animal do you think you would be the most amazed to see? You can pause the video for a second and chat about that. How about this one? What difference does it make knowing God is the creator and that I'm not just an accident and a random bunch of chemicals? All right, next, every day we want to take a little time to just say, what did I learn about God? We always want to apply what we learn. So what did I learn about God, who he is, and what he did or has done, is doing, okay? And how's that gonna affect me? So for instance, maybe I would say, I learned today that God is so creative. He's so creative, he made the whole world. And that should affect me every time I look at creation because I know God made that, how amazing it is. And that should cause me to praise him. And also, I made in his image. So when I create things, that's kind of a reflection of God. And I want to make sure my creative things that I do bring him praise. So I'm going to praise him and I want to bring him praise. Maybe I'd say something like that. There are so many things you could say. Maybe you'd say that too or something completely different. So take a minute to talk about what did I learn today about God, who he is, and what he's done or what he's doing and how will that affect my life? Okay, after you've chatted that through, here's a fun little activity you can do together. You can either do this in your house or you could go outside. Brainstorm some things that God has created and just take some time to praise him. You might want to just do that in your house or you could go out on a little scavenger hunt and look at creation and think about all the stuff God has made. How many things can you think of? All right, have fun and we'll see you tomorrow. Welcome to craft time, everybody. Today, we're making a wonder wheel. It looks something like this when it's finished. I'll tell you about how to do it in just a minute, but first, let's talk a little bit about this. Now, if you've never thought about it, when God made the days of creation in six days, it kind of lines up pretty cool because day one sort of lines up with day four, okay? So on day one, God made what? light and dark, right? And on day four, he filled it up. He put in the sun and the moon and the stars. Isn't that cool? And then on day two, he made the sky and the sea. And what did he make on day five? He filled it up with the birds and the fish and all that. And on day three, what did he make? The plants and the land and all that. And on day six, he filled it up with man and all the land animals. So it's kind of fun and makes it easy for you to remember what he made on which day, if you think day one and four, two and five, three and six. All right, so that's that. Now, let's go ahead and get the materials. If you do not have exactly what I'm, su I'm suggesting, that's okay. You can kind of just make up your own a little bit with what you have around the house. All right, so you need some paper to be able to run off the patterns, okay? And they can be in color or they can be in black and white. And you can color this if you just need to do it on white or you can run it off on color, you don't have to color it. All right, you'll need some kind of a popsicle stick or you could use a ruler or some other little stiff something or other, okay? You need something like a paper fastener, just one. And you need a pair of scissors. If you're kids, you need kids scissors, okay? Um, and you need a, a little piece of tape. It can be masking tape, it can be any kind of tape. And you need something to color with. Now, I am a marker kind of a person, so I like the juicy, fun, bright colors of markers, but you can use crayons, colored pencils, whatever you want. All right, all you have to do is run off those patterns, and then once you do, you cut them out, 
So you're gonna have one that's gonna look like this, and you're gonna cut out this notch. You're gonna have one that's like this, it's this circle, okay? And all you do is stick them together. It's really, this is really very simple, okay? And you're going to poke a hole right where that dot is, and that's where you're gonna put your paper fastener, okay? Once you do that, on the back, you just open it up, okay? You may or may not need a little piece of tape to, probably will, but something to keep this on. You, you could either glue it on or you could tape it on your little um, stick. All right, so once you do that, you are done. And by the way, download links to all the patterns are in the description below. Well, hey everybody, here we are at the concession stand and we have a special visitor to meet. Hi there, what's your name? It's Reese, Roller Coaster Reese. That's a pretty cool name. Is it a nickname? How'd you get that? Well, I love roller coasters. The tall ones, the fast ones, the looping ones. You click, click, click up that hill and then whoosh, down you speed. I can't get enough of them. Oh, I love roller coasters too. They are loads of fun. I even got to go on a behind the scenes tour at the theme park since I work here. And I met the designer of the newest coaster, the Velociraptor. Oh, that sounds awesome. It sure was. This guy designed it so it can go from zero to a hundred miles per hour in five seconds flat. Wow, that sounds like an awesome design. But you know what, Reese? Since you met the designer, you wouldn't say that that roller coaster just built itself by itself, would you? That's a no brainer. A roller coaster could never build itself. Well, you know what's crazy, Reese? What's that? There are people who say, that this world, with all the plants and animals and people and everything, just built itself. It just came about all by itself without a designer. That's nutty. I know. It's really opposite, completely opposite of what the Bible says, too. I trust the Bible. You know what? I do, too. I trust the Bible because, of course, it's the perfect book and it's always telling the truth. God says that in the beginning, he created the world in six days. That's the truth. It didn't just happen by accident. The Bible says it, that settles it. That's exactly right. And the Bible makes it clear that in six short days, everything was made. It didn't take a long time. In fact, God could have made everything in a second if he wanted to or a millisecond. Blink your eyes and imagine that everything was made that fast. Wow, God is incredible. And you know, as incredible as those roller coasters are that the designers made, they're nothing like this world God made. It just makes me wanna praise God. Me too. In fact, I'm going to celebrate and ride a roller coaster as soon as I get off work. Oh, that sounds like fun, Reese. And you know what, boys and girls? What we're going to do is try our echo phrase. So we learned already that in six short days, everything was made. But what we're going to do is do this as an echo. So I'm going to say the first part, and then you're going to say the second part back to me, okay? So here we go. In six short days, everything was made. Thanks for chiming in there, Reese. That was awesome. Okay, now we're going to try it again, and we're going to say it in a really low voice, okay? So here we go. In six short days, everything was made. Awesome. One more. How about a really high voice? In six short days, everything was made. Woo! You guys can keep working on it at home. If there's more than one of you watching this, you can echo back and forth in whatever funny way that you want to. But just remember, that's the truth. The Bible teaches us that God made everything. He's the creator. He's the master designer. And he did it all in six short days.
Incredible, 